you get your views from television news, you'll only hear stories that corporations choose. You'll only get to see what they want you to see. You're gonna have to read and decide what you believe. We all watched in horror 911. The planes hit the towers and the towers came down. Did you ever wonder how they fell so fast? Well, maybe that's a question that we're not supposed to ask. Don't you think it's strange? There were no fighter jets. Did someone give the order not to intercept? And if they really scrambled, then why'd they fly so slow? Maybe there's an answer that we don't want to know. Welcome to another episode of 9-11 was an inside job. My name is Bill Olson. We have a, a whole bunch of good news today, <laughs> good, good news or interesting news. Um, we're going to go to CG1 here. We've been talking about thermite being present at the towers for a long time. And it's been verified by FEMA, at least they show the uh, material. They don't exactly say what it is. But all, they have to, all we have to do is show that somebody else found the same stuff, and we'll worry about, you know, getting everybody on the same page later. But one more group weighed into it. They just found out that the uh, first responders that are dying from that respiratory acute distress syndrome have aluminum platelets, nano-sized aluminum platelets in their lungs. That's what they're dying from, from unreacted nanothermite. So anyway, I'll see if I can read some of this. I'm kind of out of breath from starting the show here. The 9-11 first responders suffer from a range, of, a range of different illnesses, some of which are rare in the general population. Some of the illnesses can be attributed to the high pH of the WTC dust. Um, down here it says, uh, Commonly observed conditions among the first responders include reactive airways dysfunction syndrome. Okay, I had the, the wrong definition of the acronym. Caused by exposure to high concentrations of irritants such as caustic and metallic dusts, upper respiratory, respiratory illnesses such as sinusitis and laryngitis, and lower respiratory disorders such as asthma and what is known as World Trade Center cough. Well, there you have it, folks. Not only is there thermite present, but it is what is causing some of these horrible, horrible uh, problems. Oh, did you put up that CG behind me? Yeah, and then they go to go to two and three. They're the same story, but you can see the picture better. It was shown on. The, it originally uh, was uh, published in the Foreign Policy Journal, as you can see behind me. And the next one that we're going to do. Oh, why don't you switch to one of those uh, motorcycle shots? The uh, Orange County Choppers made a, uh, a a firefighter's commemorative motorcycle to commemorate the 9/11 firefighters. And uh, right on top of the tank, show the other views. That's a good one. Uh, yeah, how do you like that? They made they actually made a, a fire hydrant shaped uh, carburetor. But now take a look at the, the little triangle plate right on the gas tank that there, you can't really see it very well, but there's a, what looks like a rivet or something. They say it's World Trade Center steel. And we saw a close up of that uh, on the show and it looks like it still has, I bet they could find unreacted thermite on that part that's on that motorcycle right now. Well, anyway, now let's move on to uh, the story about Richard Gage uh, CG7. 
Now, as, as you know, the Citizens Investigation Team uh, in New York is the team that was doing the uh, interviews and other studies, and they came up with a story about the Pentagon that involved, you know, the airplane flew over the top. And Richard Gage originally had sympathized, or not sympathized, but approved of the individual efforts being made by these, uh, the, the group, the Citizens Investigation Team group. But uh, they, they kind of went off the, the path of the scientific method, and they wound up um, biasing their, their judgment. There are far more witnesses that say they saw a plane actually hit, or they saw the plane too low to avoid missing. Um, and to ignore that type of evidence is, is cherry picking, which is a scientific method violation. So both Richard Gage and, uh, oh, Peter Dale Scott withdrew his name from their website also. And um, uh, David Chandler and um, Cole made a, that, that's the next CG, by the way, uh, CG8. They, there's a joint statement by David Chandler and Jonathan Cole um, about the Pentagon and all the things that we actually know, and we don't really know that there was a plane that missed it. So I urge you to go and look at these uh, reports for yourself. We don't have enough time to cover them right now, but uh, okay, let's, let's get on the, the big news about Egypt. Now, the reason I'm including this on the 9-11 show is after you've been in this for a long enough time, you begin to see that it's not, 9-11 is not an isolated uh, crime by our government. We've been committing crimes all over the world. I mean, remember we talk about the CIA toppling the Iranian government in the 50s and putting in the Shah, and they toppled the Egyptian government in 1952 and put in Abdul Ghamel Nasser. And, uh, well, as it turns out that uh, they don't treat their people very well when they, after they put them in power. Look what had happened with Hosni. Now, it turns out the CIA was running shots on this, on this revolution. And, of course, the CIA is, uh, it's well known that Google is a member of the CIA, fully, if not fully owned, at least fully controlled by the CIA. And that's not just paranoid, that's fully documented. But the, uh, the guy that started this revolution in Egypt was the executive from Google. I mean, what a coincidence. How, does anybody feel that's a strange thing? No. But uh, we're going to go to the, the first video cut on that DVD now. And we're, Alex Jones really puts it together right. He's dead on. And I, I couldn't even begin to say it as well as Alex Jones. So. Here's the story about Hosni Mubarak and his removal when he denied, when the, FBI, when the CIA told him, you have to step down now, he came out with a speech and said, no, I won't. And then he got the famous CIA heart attack and Mubarak is gone. We don't even know where he is. Nobody does. He, they say he's in Germany or maybe in Israel or maybe he's somewhere along the Bahrain coast. But... Why is no one talking about it? Okay, run that when you get it. How dumb does the system think we are? 30 years or three decades of his iron rule over the North African state of Egypt. Hosni Mubarak refuses to step down, even though the head of the CIA is in front of Congress saying he's going to step down in a few hours. Mubarak comes out and defiantly says, I will not step down. I will not let this foreign conspiracy overtake Egypt. And then magically, we're now told he had a stroke right after that. And the army announced the next day that they would be, quote, reforming things. This is a public military coup. There's no democratization. There's no calls for election. CNN and Anderson Cooper, who's admitted CIA, are announcing how great this move towards freedom is. Mubarak is reportedly in Egypt with a stroke, or maybe even dead. He's in northern Israel 
on the side of the sea. We don't know where he is. And where's the media? This is an issue that isn't even being discussed. Right after he says, I will not step down, this happens to him. What's developing here is the bodies are being buried. This guy has been the distribution center for the kidnapped people being taken to torture sites all over the world. This is the main central site for black sites or ghost sites where all this illegal activity is going on. This guy has the dirt on George W. Bush. He has the dirt on Barack Obama. This is the man who's followed all of their orders. But there's a problem. In the last year, it's been reported that Hosni Mubarak refused to politically get behind greenlighting an attack on Iran when Egypt is on Israel's western flank. Hosni Mubarak refused to expand other wars in the region. And this is a message to all the other Arab regimes. You get behind this buildup towards war with Iran or it's over for you politically. And now the Muslim Brotherhood is admittedly British intelligence is trying to overthrow Saudi Arabia, Yemen, Jordan, all of these allies. What does this say to people that have gone along with the New World Order? What does it say to individuals watching out there that have bought into teaming up with this system? You will be betrayed in the end. How much more obvious does it have to get? And you look at the fate of Nasser with the heart attack after he gave a defiant speech and other leaders in Egypt and many other countries. This is a message being sent out to the world, not just Middle Eastern politicians, not just politicians in Africa or Latin America or Asia, but to American politicians. Just like the message was sent with John F. Kennedy's murder. If you don't play ball and submit to the banking cartel, we will kill you, whether it's a gunshot to the head or whether it's a convenient stroke or heart attack. But the current issue that's looking us right in the eyes, that's in our face, is why isn't the corporate media in the U.S. talking more about the mysterious disappearance of Hosni Mubarak? The biggest story in the world right now is Egypt and the rebellions spreading all over the Middle East, North Africa. Why isn't it a bigger discussion about where Mubarak has gone to and what messages it send to all these pliant dictators and servants that the British and the Swiss and others are moving to seize the ill-gotten gains of Hosni Mubarak after he served them so well. Yes, Mubarak was a terrible dictator, just like Saddam Hussein, just like bin Laden was a globalist asset. But why are they treating their servants so badly? Did they ask him to do something so horrible that his conscience kicked in? We know the facts. There was a Western-funded military coup of Egypt. There are no elections, just like shark teeth, Mubarak has been removed and another row has rolled up. And then we're told this is freedom? The people are smart enough to understand what's happening. And if the globalists want dictatorships in Egypt and in every other country they influence, what do they want domestically? And we know they want a police state tyranny. And the very same corporate interests that run Egypt run the United States through fraud. And they're threatening members of Congress they're assassinating people, and we are all under this yoke of global corporate tyranny. But once we wake up and are aware of it, it loses its power. So wake up. Well, there you go. Corporate, uh, what a corporate tyranny, <laughs> combining corporatocracy and, and tyranny together. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, okay, Alex put it exactly right, and he ended that last little segment talking about you know, who else do we want to control besides the rest of the world? Why us? And so this next cut is another Alex Jones cut, and uh, it's about the police state here in the United States. And we start out with good old Janet Napolitano, big sister, big brother, <laughs> let her roll. There is no question that we have made many important strides in securing our country from terrorism since 9-11. But the threat continues to evolve.